Hey guys, pot roast is generally thought of as an American mainstay, but like most great food, it has its roots in France. So today we're gonna to take a look at a modern spin on a classic pot au feu, and a Yankee pot roast as American as apple pie, my dad's own recipe in fact. Edible you say? More like edible. <laughs> Let's get down to basics. All right, folks, so first up, we're going to make the simplest and most essential of pot roasts, the Yankee pot roast. I'm going to start by making a basic mirepoix that is four or five medium carrots, peeled and chopped, one small yellow onion, peeled and roughly chopped, and four or five ribs of celery, washed and chopped. And that's mirepoix, the basis of what makes most things taste great in this world, including and not limited to pot roast. And to make a pot roast, we need a roast with which to pot. So I've got this eye round roast here, which is a pretty lean cut of beef. We're gonna treat it as we do pretty much any roast, that is seasoned the exterior heavily with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, and let it rest at room temperature for about an hour, which is both going to help bring the roast up to room temperature and help it retain moisture down the line. Once thoroughly rested, we are patting it dry and searing it in some smoking hot vegetable oil in the same pot that we intend to braise in, because guess what we're trying to build up on the bottom of the pot? I'll give you a hint, it rhymes with wand and pond, and I'm very fond of it. So once we've got this guy good and brown on all sides, it's time to set him aside and introduce our mirepoix to the party, be aware of flying onions, and then once everybody is nice and soft. We're going to add a tablespoon of tomato paste, mix that up and let it get all nice and caramelized, and then we're going to add three cloves of garlic, two dried bay leaves, and a couple sprigs each of fresh rosemary and thyme. We're then going to season minimally with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. We don't want to over-season up front. Then we're adding one carton of beef broth, one big old chunk of actual beef, and then adding enough beef broth and red wine as desired to come about two-thirds of the way up the sides of the roast. Then we're just partially covering with the lid and placing into a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven for really anywhere from two to three hours. More on that later because during the last hour of cooking, we're going to add some pot roast appropriate potatoes and carrots. I'm just gonna peel and quarter these russets and cut these carrots into maybe like one inch pieces. We're grabbing the roast out of the oven, giving it a flip, and adding our large chunky vegetables. Then we're going to return it to the oven uncovered and cook for an additional 45 minutes to an hour, bringing the total cook time to two to three hours. I'm using this range because it depends on how you like your pot roast cooked, especially with a relatively lean piece of beef like this one. I don't want it to be so tender that it's falling apart because that'll actually dry it out. This is the kind of consistency that I'm going for. It is very tender, but it isn't falling apart and it has a nice steak-like chew to it. I'm just gonna plate up some nice slices here along with some of our larger cut vegetables. Then I'm just going to ladle some of our lovely braising liquid over top. And there you have it, a simple, economical, essential, and easy, if a bit time-consuming, pot roast. But what if you wanna go a bit more fancy with it? For that, we turn to pot au feu, which is normally an extremely laborious and very expensive dish, but thanks to this recipe based off America's Test Kitchen's method, this fussy, delicious French soup can be yours with only a few minor complications. As you can see, I'm just getting all my herbs and aromatics ready. I'm shoving a couple cloves into a halved onion, slicing the white part of a leek, retrieving my last few pathetic peppercorns out of my pepper mill, having some cloves of garlic, and thinly slicing some celery. Then onto the meat. This is an indulgent stew, and it calls for an indulgent meat. I have here some boneless short ribs, which are extremely fatty and flavorful and perfect for this occasion. Now into the braising pot go all of our aromatics, onions, leeks, one rib of thinly sliced celery, a couple bunches of parsley, a sprig of fresh thyme, and the secret ingredient, a pair of four to five inch marrow bones. This is going to bring an intense amount of flavor to the stew itself and give us some tasty marrow with which we can make a sauce. Now we're gonna go ahead and prop our meat on top of our aromatics. You might wanna use a bigger pot than this, otherwise you're gonna have to kind of feng shui it like this. We just want as much meat as possible elevated off the bottom of the pot. And then it's time to add our braising liquid. You can just use water or you could use beef broth. Either way, you only want the liquid coming about two-thirds of the way up the sides of the meat. Then we are covering and bringing the whole thing to a boil, skimming off any scum that floats to the top, before partially covering and placing in a 325 degree Fahrenheit oven, flipping the beef once and braising for two and a half to three hours. And now you'll see that there was no need to brown the meat beforehand, because by leaving it partially exposed above the liquid, it has developed a beautiful brown crust. So we're starting by pulling out the beef and marrow bones, setting those aside, and straining out about three cups worth of ultra flavorful broth. We are returning that to a low simmer over on the stovetop. In the meantime, we're digging out all the marrow that we can from our marrow bones, chopping it up very fine and placing it into a medium bowl. We're then going to add to that about half a cup of chopped fresh parsley, maybe a half a dozen finely chopped cornichon pickles. I know this sounds a little weird, but trust me. Then a nice big old bunch of finely minced chives, maybe quarter cups worth, a couple heaping tablespoons of Dijon mustard, and a nice sprinkle of white wine vinegar. Mix that all together, 
we've got a bright, herby, acidic, delicious sauce that is going to contrast really nicely with all the richness that we've got in the soup. After the broth has sat for about 10 to 20 minutes, all the fat will rise to the top, so we're just gonna skim all that off, add it back to the pot, and add enough water to make it about five cups total. Then we are bringing that to a boil and adding our vegetables in stages, starting with some halved red potatoes, which we're gonna let simmer for about six minutes before adding some carrots. I've got mine peeled, quartered, and cut into four inch segments. Then 10 minutes later, I'm adding some halved asparagus, covering and letting steam for three to four minutes until all the vegetables are tender. Then we are extracting those from the broth into a large bowl, adding a few heaping tablespoons of our sauce, tossing together, and at long last, plating up. Into a shallow bowl go some of our vegetables, a few slices of our short rib, a couple ladlefuls of our very flavorful, lovely broth. Don't worry if you still see a lot of fat floating in the broth, that's actually a really good thing. And lastly, a generous dollop of our sauce, along with a little sprinkle of some crunchy, flaky sea salt. And there you have it, the ultimate pot roast. It costs more, it's a bit more labor intensive, and it takes a little bit more time, but oh my god, it is worth it. Be aware, once you try making this, you're gonna wanna make it over and over and over again. Unfortunately, I will not be making it next week for the live stream, as I will be out of town, but we will return to our regular schedule after that.